last time here on the homestead. It's stuck in that spot again. I can't feed the trail. It's stuck. Ah, Jesus Christ. The axis of rotation is off. I was trying to be clever and it's backfired on me. That's a bit of a pain in the ass. It really is. You stupid boy. Is that the 10 panels or the 4 panels on the roof? That's the 10 panels. So we're only running 4? We are down 10 panels. That trip switch has failed. It's one thing after another, it really is. At least one good thing did happen. Adam's ultimate goal is to someday get off the grid and become self-sufficient with his energy needs. His dedication has me wondering about the steps your average household would need to take in order to get fully off the grid. This curiosity leads me to County Kilkenny to meet with Mike Wilkinson, who is some way down the road towards his own energy independence. I hear you've been living off the grid. Can you tell me a little bit about that? That's right. My wife and I have been living off grid here for the last two years. Um, it's been a dream of ours for the last five years, um, but realistically, we've only been doing it for the last two. But I think the best thing to do is to come and show you the, the setup. OK, lead the way. An array of battery power in one room. <laughs> How did you go about designing a system like this? There was a bit of trial and error involved. Technology is moving so fast in the industry that it's, it's hard to keep up with what's the latest thing. So we started off with camper van kind of stuff in mind. We found out very quickly that that wasn't quite powerful enough to run a whole house. So we were scaling that up and scaling that up until the point where we realised that no, you have to go with domestic level stuff in order to live a modern lifestyle off grid. If someone was inspired by your story and was starting today, what tips would you give? OK, um, make friends with an electrician, the first one. A lot of this equipment can be bought individually and realistically you, you have to spend a good six to nine months learning about how to set it up. So everything that's done here is always done from a safety point of view first because at the end of the day you're investing somewhere in the parish of 10,000 euros into this and if you do it right it'll last you 10 to 15 years minimum. However a small mistake could cost everything in that. Living off the grid certainly has its challenges but with the right amount of solar, wind and battery storage it's definitely achievable. It takes planning, patience and a willingness to adapt, but the independence it offers makes it all worthwhile. For anyone looking to make the switch, start small and learn as you go. Nice to get some recognition from the mainstream media. However, the goal for this tilting solar array is to take advantage of two different angles of tilt on one single axis. So to catch the early morning sun, the array can tilt all the way over to about 50 degrees facing eastwards, which is over that way. And then as the day goes on, they can transition to a level to be about 30 degrees south facing. So for reference, in winter time, the early morning sun rises just beyond the shed over there and it sets in the gap between those two hills, just beyond that tree there on the other side of the valley. So that's winter time. In summertime, the sun rises on the other side of those big old oak trees over there and it sets all the way over there between those two hills just beyond the tree line there. So this array should be able to catch maximum amount of daylight hours all throughout the year. To get this to work on the hillside I had to modify the design away from the original that we saw in the previous video. The original would have worked perfectly on flat ground however to have the hill and the tilt angle we had to change things up a bit. So what I've done is I've got a string line, went level from the first post to the last post, and I cut them all in line with the angle of the hill. And that way we can put a flat board, a two by four on top, and then mount our hinges onto that flat board. This modification to the original design is gonna give the whole array an equal axis of rotation right from the first leg up to the end leg up there. And we're going to use different hinges to what we tried in the first attempt. Getting the wiring in, I find, is always the worst part of these jobs. It takes the longest and 
you're trying to get around corners and it doesn't work out perfectly right for you it's always better to leave um, leave extra wire on the, on the bits you're burying and when you're bringing them up um, at least that way you'll never be too short but you know there's nothing wrong with being too long for it either I mentioned this in the previous video but I'm using the 10 mil twin and earth that we had lying around to save money on having to go out and buy a new cable and that's just for the 12 volt for the actuators and I've left an extra strand there in case I ever want to earth the panels and of course we have our 4 mil square PV cable now, nice and tidy more importantly waterproof <laughs> what the hell is this ugly box? This ugly thing I'm building is a cabinet to house all the 12 volt systems. So we've got a big 12 volt battery, cheap solar charge controller, it's only 10 bucks so if it fails it's not a big deal to replace it. And that'll take power from the two panels on the wall over there to recharge the battery and power the actuators for both the rotating and the tilting array. We've got two blocks of fuses, up above that then we have our two remote control actuators. Now those relays are only 5 amps, so you have to use 5 pin relays, 2 of them, and then use the remote relay to trigger those heavier current relays so that they can send enough power to actually drive the actuators. It's a bit of a bird's nest at the moment, but I'll tidy it up later on. At least this way, all of the 12 volt stuff is in one location and there's no big long cable runs. I could have bought a ready-made cabinet, but I wasn't confident that it'd be able to take the 26 kilos weight of the battery. So I figured I'd build one instead, coat it with bitumen paint, and use some of the corrugated sheets then to keep the rainwater away. Where are we going? Over here. Now I'm gonna put it up in here. And now. Okay. Put your legs down. Uh, nice one. Job done. This time around, to support the upper frame, I'm going for stainless steel gate hinges. So they'll sit on the frame like that. We can attach this to the upper frame separately and they'll sit together and it'll be able to tilt over and back just like that. These are about 25 quid on Amazon. Could be stainless steel, could be Chinesium. We'll find out soon enough. Another benefit of using these type of hinges is that they have that little bit of adjustment room on them. Just to make sure everything turns freely when it is actually sitting on top. So you can adjust the, the top nut as well as the bottom. Looks like a giant ladder, doesn't it? The 12 volt actuators that I'm using for this project are these ones here, made by Ecoworthy, a well known brand around the world. Um, they're capable of 1500 newtons on the push, it says, it's not going to need half of that. And the total stroke length is 16 inches or 400 millimeters. So we'll have to get them on there now. And as you can see in the distance there, the sun is about to set. We are just about out of daylight for today. When it comes to fitting these linear actuators, a key point to remember is that. The closer one end of the actuator is to the hinge point, the longer the distance of travel you'll get. However, you do that at the expense of leverage. 
So in this case, I want to get a mixture of both because with the weight of the panels on there, it's going to be about 100 kilos weight in panels. So I want to make sure that these will keep the frame steady in, in some sort of high winds. All right. Now, up and over. Up and over. There we go. No, 23 and three quarters. 24. <laughs> ah, for fuck's sake, 24. Look, it's not too bad. It's only like a tiny bit. You're just OCD about things. It's the weight, more Fine. so than that okay, now. Now. 23.9. That's it. That is it. <laughs> Just a quick tip guys, in case you didn't know this already, not all MC4 connectors are created equal. There's lots of different types. So say for example, if your panels happen to come with this type on the back of them, but you've only got these ones running on your cables, you're gonna have to snip the ones off the end of the panel and match them up to the ones you've got because they will not plug in very well together if they do at all. So it's always handy just to have a box of them around so you can make sure that all your connections are good and solid. There's only one thing left to do. It's usually Clodagh that does it, but this time I get to do the honours. Let's have a look. Straight away up to one kilowatt. Show me your fantastic okay, so thing then, come on. You ready to test, test it out? Show me it. We see the reaction. Okay, so this it is fairly solid, even with the wind coming up, though, isn't it? Ah, it wiggles a little bit. No, no, oh, it, okay. it does. It wiggles a little bit in the wind. Oh, okay. Okay, ready? Go on. So, morning sun is over there in the east. What do you think? Yeah, that's very that's pretty good. cool, isn't it? Yeah. I like that. I think that's class. That is, that is class. Cool, yeah. So yeah, pretty cool, huh? Very good. Yeah, despite all the delays, three videos out of it. Yeah. But yeah, we'll uh, We'll come back in the next one. We'll get some readings off at early morning. And uh, until then, do take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.